pretty exciting, guys. I, um, I spent uh, uh, my own money on Pawn Shop, and I'm proud <laughs> to say that. Um, and uh, I'm sure you guys have heard uh, a lot of compliments, obviously not just from critics and stuff, but uh, uh, you've developed an incredible fan base, and you did that with Pawn Shop, with, which was a, an album that you could listen to from beginning to end. Uh, it wasn't based oh, on you. one radio hit. It wasn't based on any of those. It was based on a body of work. Yeah. You've done it again now, uh, Port St. Joe out. Uh, happy to be back uh, chatting with you guys about yeah, new music. Likewise, likewise, likewise. You know, the beginning of 2016 that. was was when uh, Pawn Shop was released. That That's seems right. like, God, it seems like so long ago, but and so much it has does, happened yeah. since a then. A lot yeah. has happened since yeah. then. And, uh, you know, and I think we, we, this new record we have about Port St. Joe, I think is a, uh, a good indication of that. You know, I think the when you hear this record, you will hear, uh, you know, as John put it in one quote, all the shows we've played, the miles we've logged, and, and the fans we've made, and uh, I think you can definitely hear this is a, a step up for us. I think we're just more confident. We've improved just from the hundreds and hundreds of shows we yeah. played. And um, and so, yeah, and so it's, it's good to finally be here putting out another record with there, after so much happening. There's something to be said for, you know, the, the cycle of, of giving fans of your music something that you want, uh, you know, and being in that Nashville cycle of tour, record, tour, record, re you know, yeah, release yeah. it maybe yeah. one every 18 months or something like that. But... I don't know, I think all the albums that I probably love, and I, I don't have any data to back this up right now, but I think probably all of the albums that I love and that have, uh, have legs uh, probably took a little longer to make. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, so we tracked that over about a two-week span uh, in Port St. Joe, but it's not like we went down there with, with just a completely blank slate. It was months and months, if not years, of writing, yeah. trying stuff, playing songs at shows, realizing what works, what doesn't work. You know, I'd say we showed up, you know, we showed up with all the songs written before we got there. Um, and the good portion of the songs, we kind of messed around in rehearsals. We, so we had kind of a, uh, an idea of how they were going to go. And some of the songs we just kind of figured out on the spot. But it's interesting, this record, because w when we recorded it, it was in the process of us playing shows. In fact, we were down, we did those two shows uh, with Tim and Faith, the Soul to Soul tour. Yeah. Didn't even go home. We took the bus straight to the Port St. Show, to Jay Joyce's Beach House, and kept playing. So it was almost like, it was like another tour stop, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was almost a part of our tour schedule. It wasn't like we, all right, let's get off the road for a while and record a record. It was just part of being on the road. So it has that live feel inherently. Well, that's a pretty good uh, way to go about things. Uh, usually, I would think, if you're, if you're in the pocket at the moment, let's go and capture a moment. The moment yeah. while we're in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, and th that was the biggest reason why we wanted to to title the record Port Saint Show is I think you know when you listen to it, you wanted people to, to kind of bring them there in that moment yeah. while we were there recording it. Lord knows country music loves its geography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Port Saint Joe. So this is your your producer, Mr. Joyce. Joyce. Yeah, this is where his beach house is. Yeah, like he said in passing, we went to his studio to talk about the record pre-production, just kind of get an idea. He'd listen to a bunch of songs and. Um, he had just gotten back. He actually had to come back a day early because we had one day to go over the songs for the record. And he said, just kind of really in passing, jokingly, hey, we should go down there and record. And we were like, no, that's like, we're literally in one of the best studios in the world having this conversation, yeah. which is two blocks from TJ's house. It's like right around the corner from my house. And we were like, screw it. Let's make it as inconvenient as possible and let's do it. And then, um, you know, we threw some numbers around, some dates, and then he texted us. He's like, hey, man, I think we can actually make this work. And um, it was just about us getting out of Nashville. You know, there's nothing wrong with Nashville. It's an yep. amazing town to make music in. But for us, we wanted to get as far away from distractions as possible, get in a headspace, a fresh space. I mean, it's amazing what a change of scenery can do creatively. Yep. And we were able to just just relax and not worry about anything. I mean, we rolled into the studio about 11 o'clock, noon, 12:30. He's like, just come whenever you're ready. We stayed yeah, whenever in a we beach felt house. like we were ready to go. We just kind of we just kind of showed up. And that's yeah. how typically a lot of sessions work. For those that that don't know this. The, there's really strict times when you start and end yeah. because the, the musicians show up, the card shows up, and it kind of feels like you're clocking in and out, yeah. and, which is a really weird thing to do for, for creativity. Um, and here, it, it just felt like we were hanging out. We were just hanging out with our friends, playing at home, and um, and so we left a lot of it alone. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes in there. You can hear, uh, I get the lyrics wrong, which is probably no surprise to those who know me well. Um, and, I played wrong notes too. And you know, it's uh, at one point in time, Jay's brother was there, so we were the, we're, the the majority of the recording happened in one big communal kitchen, living room, dining room area, 
and Jay's brother was there and he was cooking for us for us all day because there was no place for us to get to, to get dinner or anything. Uh, and you can hear him back there flipping pans on. and some of the tracks. Yeah, there's a couple of moments you can hear like a pan slam yeah. on the stove. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so we just wanted to kind of bring that live feeling to an album. Uh, and so I mean, literally, I mean, the, one of our biggest goals was to get it to where you felt like you were in the room with us uh, when we uh, recorded it. But you showed up and you said, that the songs were already written. Does that yeah. mean like that everything? You got the verses, choruses, and they're all done. Yeah, the structure everything of the was song done, done and ready to go. I mean, that's a typical approach in Nashville is to get in a room and, and just hash out songs, you know? And you know, we've written hundreds of songs yeah. and you won't hear most of them. I mean, almost every songwriter has written hundreds of songs <laughs> that you'll some never of them I hear. Hope no one hears. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Our producer Jay yeah. came up with the sequencing, which I think is also particularly really is unique. The, the first four tracks, um, it doesn't even stop. I mean, it literally, it rolls right into the next song, into the next. And we wanted, again, to, to just make a body of music um, that would be around for decades. I love you. Everybody's, everybody in every genre is uh, traveling to Nashville to record. You guys get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and again, there's nothing wrong with that because no, Nashville's know, know. got incredible recording yeah. studios. I mean, it's like they're, they're busting out some incredible music every day, like right now as we're speaking. Uh, but for us, you know, we live there, and when we're done recording, we got to go home. We got to worry about bills. We got to worry about, you know, cutting the grass. Yeah. Just, just, you know, small mundane things that, but it, it gets you out of the creative headspace. And being there for two weeks, we never left that headspace. So we were able to, I think, to, to do in two weeks what would have taken us two months to do if we were in Nashville. Do you still cut your own grass? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man, full disclosure, though, we're never at home. I know, I so know. So that grass, I mean, it would be this tall by now. It would be like jungle there. <laughs> my house. I love that. I love that, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, talk to me about Shoot Me Straight. Make a burn. That was a song that started off as a ballad when we finished it. We weren't really sure where, what was going to be. We liked the lyrics, but it didn't really have anything that really stood out musically. And uh, John had this idea of kind of marrying up. I had this riff I've been messing with of kind of marrying those two things up. And uh, and that's what came out. It just kind of sped it up a little bit and turned it. You know, of course, not only as country music a fan of geography, but we're also a fan of double entendres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that song is, is certainly written uh, in, this, in that same vein. I always I always uh, um, love a great opening riff, and I mean they're so hard to get to make timeless. Like I think about ACDC as being like maybe oh, the man. best band oh, in the world yeah, forever, yeah. like opening riffs, right? Ever. Um, there's like three in this song. I was thinking like. Didn't, did at some point you decide, because right after you finish the first chorus, it goes back into a bit that's got a little bit more chug and groove to it. It's like a different guitar line. It could be a lead line for a different song. I'm like, man, they put both of those in one song? Yeah, I don't know. Interestingly enough, that first riff was TJ's idea, and he'd been like messing around with that riff for a while. And the song initially was a ballad yeah. that he wrote. And it was like kind of... I want to hear the was, ballad version I of that song. I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> we can't remember how it goes, which is only... Probably a good sign. Yeah, a good sign. That it was it worth changing, exactly. but... You know, lyrically it was cool, just melodically and musically it wasn't anything special, so we mashed it with TJ's riff, and it was like, man, I made the this weirdest, coolest thing, and TJ is an amazing guitar player, but he doesn't approach things like a normal guitar player, so he comes up with these really weird licks that uh, like a normal guitar player would yeah. do, which is super cool. It's like, you know, it's just, it's definitely unconventional. And, um, and then we were just in the studio, and just one of the solo takes I took was that kind of middle section, yeah. that, ba, 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 da, that thing. And Jay was like, that's weird, I like that. We gotta turn that into a hook. And it's just something I just kind of played, and he's really good about finding moments like that. He, you know, he doesn't want you to think, he just wants you to react, and that's where he thinks that you're, you're most creative. That's really good, because uh, uh, the, the song already had a hook, and it was like another hook. Yeah. I'm like, more hooks. I'm more like, hooks. Yeah. Well, that's, like, like, you know, that's like an Aerosmith song, you know? Yeah. Aerosmith song is always hook, 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 chorus, yeah. chorus, chorus. It's like every verse is a chorus, and a chorus is another chorus, and a bridge is a third chorus, and more hooks. But it all fits really, really well together. Yeah. It's super nice. Um, you guys obviously care about album art, which is nice. Was this taken by the Beach 
Beach House? That it's was because uh, you know country music albums tend to be eight by tens. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for recognizing. Yeah. This uh, <laughs> this was uh, taken really close to there in that same yeah. that same area, uh, and it was we wanted we had the idea of, of of it being on the beach, but it's not a beachy record. So the yeah. the thought was, and you can probably really see a little bit more on the back, is that we are. That we would be dressed up in big clothes, so we went. We're down there in the winter, yeah. and it just so happened that this particular day, it was even cold. Uh, this is down in you know in Florida, yeah. so this is they they're really good, very mild winters. Yeah. It was freezing cold out here, and <laughs> yeah. the wind was like 40 miles an hour, uh, and we froze our tails off out there. Yeah. Everyone on the shoot was so aggravated with us <laughs> yeah. for wanting to go down. You know, there. in yeah. fact, we and wanted to that. leave, and the photographer was like, look, it's going to be sunset in about 20 minutes. We were like, freezing. We've been outside all day. It was the last shoot. We're like, this is miserable. I don't care. And she made us wait. She insisted. <laughs> and um, oh, the last shoot of the day was that picture. And, and had we... Um, Did had, you send her a little note saying, I'm glad we stuck around? Well, we sent her a check. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she needed. You know when people say, oh, I can't thank you enough. You're like, you really can. Yeah, you can. You exactly. can't thank me enough. Here's my, here's my routing number. Yeah, you That's can exactly send me 20,000 right. thank yous. <laughs> um, it's great work, guys. Uh, I can't thank you enough for being a, a part of this. This is great. This is Likewise. our first show yeah, on the radio great, across Canada. Yeah. 21 what stations honor, yeah. across yeah. Canada. Paul McGuire's Country Countdown. Thanks for being a part of that. Yeah. And uh, uh, Port St. Joe is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, another thing thank you. Yeah. before we check out here yeah. is that we, uh, we're coming back up here to do a headline tour oh. this fall. So we are going to be circling back around. It'll be the first time we've toured up the through here with Eric Church, yep. and we've done a couple one-off dates. We haven't done like an official tour in Canada, so this is our first time doing that. We're excited to get back up here. It's been a couple years since we played up here at a bunch, um, and we'll be playing a bunch of new songs. And that's in the fall. In the that's fall. in the fall. Yeah. Fall. All right. Yeah. It gets you know it's it's like Florida in the winter up here in the fall. Yeah. yeah. So be careful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Sunsets are pretty, but yeah, it can exactly. be cold. So right. dress appropriately. Yeah. We'll bring coats. Yeah. No, that's all right. Brothers Osborne. Thank you, man. Thanks, Good guys. To see you. Awesome. Yeah. Shoot me straight. Don't give me that salt, shake your red lime. Don't give me that comeback chase of this time. Don't muddle it up, don't water it down. Give me everything you got right here, right now. Make it burn. <laughs>